In this video, I am going to explain about the graphical representation of data. That is, we are going to see how a data can be explained using graphs. The main objective of this video is to picture data with graphs. We are going to learn about individuals and variables. We are going to see two different types of data which are categorical and quantitative ways to chart categorical data using bar graph and pie chart ways to chart quantitative data using histograms dot plots and stem plots and also to interpret the histograms the individuals and variables are Define this way. Individuals are the objects described in a set of data. For example, if I'm asking each student to tell the majors they are interested in, that is, I'm collecting information from each individual who are the students, and the variable is the major they are interested in. Maybe that will be a categorical data. So the examples can be freshmen, newborns, golden retrievers, fields of corn cells. A variable is any property that characterizes an individual. A variable can take different values for different individuals. The ex examples can be age, gender, blood type, blood pressure, the length uh, of the leaf, and the color of the flower. A variable can be either quantitative, like age, blood pressure, or height, or it can be categorical. Example, gender, blood type, say A positive, B positive, AB positive, O positive, O negative, the color of the flower, etc. There are two types of data. One is categorical data, and we are going to use two different graphs, bar graph and pie chart for describing a categorical data. Histograms, dot plots, stem and leaf plots for quantitative data. For graphing categorical data, we need two graphs, bar graph. It may look like this. That is, we may have rectangles representing each categorical item, like in this case, a student's favorite color, red, blue, green, black, pink, and we have the number of students, that is our frequency. So we can have the frequency on the y-axis and on the x-axis, we have the different colors. So this is bar graph. The same bar graph can be converted into a pie chart by taking proportion of those values, those frequencies, for a circle. So the whole circle will be divided into small sectors corresponding to the proportions of those frequencies here. In this example, this represents a pie chart for the different uh, categorical one, footwear, clothing, novelty items, fragrance, and accessories. For graphing quantitative data, we have three types of diagrams, histograms, dot plots, and stem and leaf plots. So let's see the three different diagrams, histograms, dot plots, stem and leaf plots to represent the quantitative data. For making a dot plot, we always create a single axis representing the quantitative variables range and represent each data point as a dot which are positioned according to its numerical value. And if their numbers are repeated, then you stack them up. Let's say, see this example, where a survey of how long does it take to eat your breakfast is asked. So you have the minutes from zero to 12 and the people lists are given. So six people say that they take zero minutes to eat breakfast. Maybe 
they have not taken their breakfast at all. Two people say they need only one minute having breakfast, etc. So we can easily construct a dot plot by taking the horizontal line where the line consists of those minutes from 0 to 12. And just above these minutes, we can tell, use those dots to represent the number of people. For example, under 0, we have 6. And for 9, we have 3. 3 people, those who have taken the breakfast within three minutes, sorry, nine minutes. Let's take uh, raw data here. Before doing the dot plot, we have to sort them out. So we have the sorted data. Once that data is sorted, so the minimum is 11, then the maximum is 40. So if we fix a scale on a horizontal line from 10 to 40, and corresponding to those numbers, we can use the dots to represent the given data. So 11, there are two 22s, two 23s, and two 35. So you are stacking them one above the other. The stem plot or the stem and leaf plot can be plotted this way. Suppose if I have 63 in a data, 3 goes under leaf and 6 goes under stem. So all the unit values, the single digit, will go under the leaf and the remaining will go under the stem. So if we have a raw data, sort them out, and then we can easily get the stem and leaf plot 11, one on, under the stem and one under the leaf. If it is 14, one under the stem and four under the leaf. So if it is 26, six under leaf and two under stem. For a histogram, we have quantitative values on the horizontal line, and we have the number of people which gives us the frequency on the y-axis. Frequencies on the y-axis, the age in years on the x-axis. So between one, the class interval one to five, it looks like there are five people under that age group. So you can easily construct these uh, uh, rectangular shapes. It's almost like a bar graph, but there is a slight difference between a bar graph and a histogram. Bar graph, you can rearrange those bars. It will not alter the data. Whereas here, you cannot rearrange according to the height. See, I cannot uh, use this 13, 17 first and then 9, 13, etc. Because if I switch, then it doesn't give any meaning because on my horizontal line, there are values, there are numerical values attached to that. So for making a histogram, let us see an example of guinea pigs. There are 72 guinea pigs survival time provided in our list. And we are asked to construct a histogram with a class interval of 50 starting at 0. That is, 0 is included in the first class. So if 0 is included in the first class, 50 is excluded in the first class. So the 72 values are given this way from 43 to 598 it is already sorted out so i have to count the number of um, uh, guinea pigs in each interval it say clearly said we have to start from zero with an interval of 50 so 0 to 50 50 to 100 100 to 150 since the last one is 598 i'll have 550 to 600 and before constructing the histogram, it is better to construct the table, the frequency table. And the frequency table for this data may look like this. So between 0 to 50, there are two guinea pigs. Between 50 to 100, 28 like that. 550 to 600, it is one and the total is 72. But in this frequency table, we will be wondering whether to include 50 in the first class interval or 50 in the second class interval. It said 0 has to be included. So all those lower limits are included. 0, 50, 100, 150, 200, there are lower limits are included. Upper limits are excluded. 
So it is actually 0 to 49 and then here 50 to 99. The reason why we are not, we are saying 0 to 50 again, 50 to 100 is to avoid the confusion. Suppose if I have 50.75, where will that fit? So in order to avoid that situation, we always take 0 to 50, 50 to 100, etc. So using the frequency table, we can easily construct the histogram. 0 to 50, there are 2, 50 to 100. So 100 is not included. 50 is included when we count there are 28 here. So we can easily complete the histogram for the given frequency and the survival time on the x-axis. When we interpret the histogram, we are looking for the overall pattern and for striking deviations from that pattern. We describe the histogram's shape, center, spread, and also the possible outlier. Shape is, it can be unimodal, bimodal, symmetric, skewed, or irregular. The center will be approximately the midpoint, and the spread will be how the values are deviated, how, what is the range. An outlier can also be obtained using the histogram. When we say the shapes, we can talk about symmetric distribution where the left half of the shape is a mirror image of the right half, like in this example. When I fold this into two, the shape lying to the right of it will be the same as the shape lying to the left of it. So this is a symmetric distribution. We may have a left skewed distribution where the left side extends much farther out than the right side. That is, the left side will have extreme values. Right skewed the right side will have extreme values and it extends much further out than the left side. And also we can talk about the outlier. See here in this diagram we have an overall pattern looks like all these bars are um, connected whereas if value around 10 are lying further away detached from the um, general shape of it. So that those values may be outliers. Outliers are observations that lie outside the overall pattern of a distribution. So in this, we have to remember two things. We divided this into two. One is categorical data. We use two different types of graphs. One is bar graph and the other one is pie chart. And the second type is called quantitative data. And we use two different, three different types of graphs, dot plot, stem and leaf plot, and histogram. So in this video, we talked about graphical representation of data. Hope this video was helpful and hope you enjoyed watching this video. Thank you for listening and thank you for watching. Thank you.